Hello, Imaginers. It's Kyla coaching you to the life and career that you imagined. And on this episode, I wanted to talk to you about the future of work. This has been a passion area of mine for probably 15 years. I've been following the work of the World Economic Forum and all of their extraordinary research on the future of work. We know that in the last two years, our workforce has sped up by a decade. And the shift is still underway, but a lot of companies are asking employees to come back to work. And so in this episode, I wanted to talk to you about what their future of work can actually be for you because you get to decide. And I also wanna talk about some prompts that you can use to determine what the future of work should be for you. I just returned from a couple really inspiring events. One was a conference in California that of course had been scheduled, <laughs> rescheduled multiple times for female entrepreneurs. And we had a session that was on the metaverse and Harvard Business Review just came out with a really interesting article about the future of work as it relates to the metaverse. And if you are like me, I didn't know that much about the metaverse, but think about democratized access to all kinds of things, like someone that you're working with. And the metaverse will enable you to think of it like a video game where you can put on your virtual reality headset and you can go into a room with the person that you're working with, a virtual room, and it'll feel like you're in the same room together. That is one of the opportunities for working in the metaverse. I also listened to a fascinating uh, MIT Sloan Management course on the future of work without jobs, which definitely got my attention. And I started to think about, I don't actually have a traditional job. So I am already working as part of the future of work without job, without a traditional job. I have my own business. I do a lot of consulting. I obviously do a ton of coaching. And the consulting work that I do is generally project-based. And I don't have a traditional team that I work with. I, the project that I'm working on right now, I only have one meeting a week and it's not on Zoom, which makes me very happy. And I don't have traditional performance reviews. I don't have traditional team events, sort of all of the things that you think of when people come together in a traditional setting. And so I'm already experiencing the future of work without a traditional job. And we know from all the research that the World Economic Forum has done that this is the future. In the future, the vast majority of employees won't work for companies. It's not wild to think about they'll actually be people like me. They'll be what we think of today as a project, a project worker. So employees will come on to a company's project. They'll work on that project for some period of time, and then they'll move on to the next project. And that is what we're moving toward. So if we think about over the last couple of years, all of these new terms for people deciding that there might be a different way for them, the great resignation, the great reevaluation, all of those, the great do-over was one I heard recently. All of those terms signify that we have had a, a, a societal shift in the last couple of years that has made all of us rethink, what do we really want from our lives? And so today I wanted to give you a couple of, again, prompts that you can use to decide what you want the future of your work to be, whether you're already on your own, maybe you have your own business or you're moving toward that. I'd love to help you with that if you're moving toward it. And maybe you're still in corporate America, but you want something different. We know that many companies have asked employees to come back to the office and some of them didn't oblige. <laughs> So it's an interesting time for employees. The sort of the power shift has moved back to employees. I read um, 
a labor statistic yesterday that for every one person who is unemployed, there's actually two jobs available. And that doesn't even, of course, count the people who are looking for jobs and, and want to change um, perhaps to a different kind of culture, a different kind of work environment, a different kind of approach. I have a client who was telling me recently that they have been able to sort of pick off <laughs> key talent from Fortune 50 companies that would have never considered working for them in the past. But they are offering, this specific company is offering complete flexibility in terms of the work experience. So if you wanna come in one day a week, if you want to never come in, it's really up to the employee. And so because of that, they were able to attract talent that they weren't able to attract before. And we're gonna to continue to see this as time goes on. And again, as humanity decides what it really wants out of life. We, over the past couple of years, so many of us were able to, to sort of have some space, some intellectual um, and, and spiritual and mental space to really think about, again, what do we want our lives to be? What do we want our career purpose to look like? Is it where we are currently employed, the kind of work that we're currently doing, or is it somewhere else? So let's talk about a few of the prompts that can help you make some of this, these decisions. If you're deciding, perhaps I'm interested in doing different kinds of work for a different kind of company. I'm interested in working with different kinds of people, uh, clients, if you own your own company. But for me, it comes down to these three foundational questions. What is your why? What is your where? And what is your who? I go much more in depth into these questions on my podcast, actually. So if you'd like to go more in depth into this area, check out my podcast on whatever your favorite outlet is. It's called Living the Life You Imagined. And I have uh, two parts that I've just released over the past month that go much deeper into creating your dream career. But for today, I just wanna hit on a couple of these because again, future of work is so top of mind right now and every day new articles are coming out about how companies are making decisions, adapting, how employees are responding to those decisions, um, some of which are unfavorable. And really, again, reimagining what the, the workforce could be. So much of the Sloan MIT management class that I went to was about the same idea of democratizing the work experience. So similar to what I was talking about with the metaverse, what if it was up to you what your work experience was? And what if society decided what the work experience was going to be based on some of the epiphanies that we've all had over the last couple of years. I had this crazy idea the other day. What if, what if the places we go get coffee, for example, um, were based on more of a membership model? I know that even as an introvert, I, I love to commune with people. I, I work in a co-working space. That's where I am today. And I love interacting with people. But I also need time that is solitary and I can fill my cup back up. But what if there was a, a communal environment, like the place you get your coffee, where it was membership-based, there was some kind of community manager there, something that we're used to seeing in co-working spaces, and part of your membership was a, some amount of the drink of your choice. <laughs> I often think about as we democratize our society, we want to make sure that there's equity and equality in all of the decisions that we're making. And there are places in, in society where there's some requirement for someone to be there, right? But what if we could reimagine what those experiences could look like in the future? And I hope that you'll come along that journey with me to reimagine what the future could be, what society could look like. I remember vividly when I was uh, studying and working abroad, I had to plan my week because things weren't open 24 seven. And that was part of creating a society with equity and equality where there was time and space for 
workers to be at home. Because again, there are places in our society the way it exists today where someone needs to, you know, be there. But in the future, what could those what could those jobs look like? I think it's so exciting to reimagine. And we're at this beautiful tipping point right, right now where we can really decide what that is. So again, let me hit these three questions for you. So the first question in creating the future of work for you is what is your why? I often think about Simon Sinek's work when I'm thinking about purpose and what is your why? What is your greater reason for being on this planet is the way that I always think about it. And we do a lot of uncovering work to get to why if you want help in my coaching practice. But fundamentally, I always think about sort of the end of my life and what I wanna be able to say that I help people with. For me, it's uncovering and activating what their actual purpose is. And for most of my clients, that's with a ton of freedom and flexibility, intellectual stimulation, peace, of course, financial abundance. That is what I was put on this planet to do. That is my why. What do you wanna be able to say? What is your why? When you think about the things in your current career experience that you enjoy, what is it that lights you up? What are the things that you get lost in? All of those are your why. The second one is, what is your where? For me, I just got back from 10 days of working in California. I will be heading out again for a lot of the summer to work from different locations. And that is part of my where. I don't want to be in a traditional environment 365. I created a career that I could be working from wherever the weather was the best, wherever the environment was aligned with who I am. A lot of the places I choose are in nature because that's where I find peace and that's where my magical thinking is, is ignited. So what is your where? Do you want to be going into an office every day? If you do, fantastic. But if you don't, what would it look like? Would you be in a co-working space to have some community one day a week? Would you have Zoom calls without being on video? What would you want your where to be? And then the third question is, what is your who? Who do you want to work with? I talked about this a lot on my podcast episode. Do you want to work with a micromanager or do you want to work with a dreamer? Someone who gives you empowered flexibility to do your deepest, most important work. There's such a movement right now to deep work and deep thinking. And I can tell you as someone who that part of her, her career has exploded since I started my own business. And that didn't exist for me when I was in corporate America. And not saying all of corporate America does not um, enable deep work, but unfortunately, there's a lot of structure in corporate America that doesn't. A lot of meetings, a lot of checking the boxes. And it's so exciting to see some companies moving to a place where their employees can have mental space, physical space for deep thinking. So who would you want to work with? What kind of culture would you want to be in? What kind of clients would you want to attract? How would you want to spend your time? With who? I just got back from, again, this amazing conference where I was surrounded by other female entrepreneurs who want to create a better world. I'm also really involved with an organization called the House of Beautiful Business. And that is sort of a think tank for people who want business to be more beautiful, more equitable, more just, more for the good of humanity. Those are really important things to me. And I've now created a business and an approach in my life where I can focus and be involved and engage with those kind of organizations. So what is your why? Why were you put on this planet? Start to uncover that. What is your where? Where do you physically want to be? And what, how do you want that where experience to go? Do you want to be on Zoom, on video or not? And then what is your who? Who do you want to work with? Who do you want to interact with? Who do you want to collaborate with? Who do you want to serve? 
all of those are the pieces of the puzzle to creating your future of work that is your dream career. As I mentioned, I would love to help you continue this uncovering, take this work deeper. Check out my website at kylamartinconsulting.com. You go to the inspiration tab and sign up for my weekly email. I offer additional tips and tricks and insights and prompts that you can use to continue to uncover your dream career and life. Because you know, I am cheering you on toward that. Take care.